Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for having us again. Uh, I just wanted to talk about our uh, Fight Imperialism Stand Together, uh, FIST, a revolutionary socialist youth group uh, based in the United States that's uh, dedicated to fighting imperialism from the belly of the beast uh, with a new generation, new face, and new tactics. Um, <clears throat> Although FIST has been in existence for uh, some time, uh, for a few years on and off, we decided to kind of have a founding congress as a way to uh, proclaim our, you know, existence in the anti-imperialist movement and to begin to get organized and learn how to learn from uh, previous examples in history uh, of organized uh, Marxist-Leninist movements uh, using democratic centralism um, and finding ways to fight imperialism from uh, one of the hardest places to fight it uh, in the world. So I just wanted to read you uh, a section of our preamble, just so you have a general sense of what kind of values we strive for, what we're fighting for, and who we are. Um, <clears throat> so the greatest enemy of humanity at this point in time is the global system of imperialism. Imperialism is not a policy, but a global system of monopoly capitalism, where a small group of capitalists located in the Western countries dominate and control the world economy. Big bankers and industrialists on Wall Street, in London Stock Exchange, in Paris and in Berlin, make super profits exploiting the labor and natural resources of almost the entire planet. <clears throat> Imperialism has been beaten down and destroyed people in oppressed nations, the so-called third world, creating sweatshop conditions, driving wages and living conditions down, destroying the environment, and subjecting entire nations to degradation and humiliation. Whenever a country emerges as an economic competitor to the imperialist or attempts to break free from their system and develop independently, the result is sanctions, threat of war, invasion, and destruction. Imperialism's horrendous crimes are not restricted to the oppressed countries, but are often unleashed against the peoples residing within the borders of the United States. Imperialist capitalism has fomented racism, sexism, anti-LGBTQ bigotry, and other forms of oppression. It has created a large apparatus of police repression and a system of, of prisons for profit. It has created a decadent and moral culture, encouraging a twisted me-first personality that leaves millions to feel hopeless and alienated. It is currently in the process of drastically reducing the standard of living and transitioning the country to complete low-wage economy. The result has been a crisis of home foreclosures, hunger, and the deindustrialization of the Rust Belt in the Midwest. The crisis of monopoly capitalism has created an entire generation of youth who look to the future with extreme fear and insecurity, no longer able to envision the American dream, if it ever existed. The imperialists tell us that their system reflects human nature, that it's unchangeable, and that's the best we can do. Yet even in the richest centers of world capitalism, millions sleep on the street each night, and millions more go without basic nutrition. U.S. society, with its astronomical rates of sexual assault, rape, child abuse, domestic violence, drug addiction, mental illness, and suicide, is no paradise. It has no grounds to claim it is, quote, developing or, quote, civilizing the countries it attacks and exploits. With frequent mass shootings and child children going through mental me metal detectors each morning at school, this is not a model that any country should aspire to be. Um, so that's part of our um, preamble for Fight Imperialism Stand Together. Um, so thank you. And, you know, we've also made, made it a point to really keep the tradition of uh, self-determination, uh, the Leninist principle of self-determination for oppressed peoples. Um, so we 100% show our support for the black liberation movements, the Chicano liberation movements, uh, women's liberation movements, LGBTQ liberation movements, trans uh, liberation, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we feel that the uh, most people who are most oppressed should be at the forefront of organizing. Uh, there's a tendency in a lot of uh, liberal organizations to kind of, you know, we're, you know, to have this mentality of, okay, we're on the same playing field now. Let's redistribute the cards and we're all fine. Well, for, we acknowledge the tremendous history of 
male-dominated society, of uh, capitalist-dominated society, of, of uh, white-led uh, so uh, led societies in, in the world. And we want to put people of color, women, LGBTQ, trans at the forefront. We're not saying that uh, we're going to make it equal so that um, we each can do that. We're saying no. We're specifically beginning uh, with those who are, have been most oppressed uh, when it comes to everything in, in terms of representing ourselves, speaking, delegations. Uh, we made it a point, uh, you know, for events, we should always have women and people of color and LGBTQ and other oppressed people as the, the face of the organization as much as possible. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to talk a little bit about our structure, just so you have a sense of uh, how we're planning to organize. Um, and this is, goes back to our understanding of the national question, our understanding of oppressed peoples uh, in the United States, and how we can put them at the forefront, not just in the movement, but leading the movement uh, as part of the masses. So part of our structure uh, is promoting leadership from oppressed sectors of US society. Uh, and we write, in all of this activities, every effort will be made to promote leadership from the oppressed sectors of US society. People of color, working class people, women, LGBTQ people, immigrants, people with disabilities, and otherwise oppressed people will be encouraged to play leadership roles in the organization. Uh, our membership is open to all who agree with and accept the preamble of this document and are willing to cooperate with the organization nationally and locally. Um, and the best way to, uh, for those on watching this on YouTube, uh, the best way to find us for membership is uh, fightimperialism.org. Uh, that's our, our website has been getting a lot more traffic recently with our participation in the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. Um, and people are asking questions and are finally realizing that this all boils down to imperialism and capitalism. Uh, lastly, I just wanted to announce uh, the the national secretaries we have five and in, including myself uh, we also have uh comrade colleen davidson from baltimore uh comrade danielle bochi from uh, durham north carolina uh comrade dylan garcia from rockford illinois and comrade joe mcgraw from uh detroit from uh michigan so that's our national co-secretariat um and for this year we plan on having an annual congress uh, every year and we depending on uh, we also made it a point to mention that uh, our conferences generally which will be scheduled in May uh, of each year uh, we're, we're going to try to have them in locations that are particularly hit and uh, uh, affected by uh, capitalism and imperialism uh, we picked Detroit this year uh, there's a lot going on uh, we kind of got a sense of uh, what the city is going through. It's very uh, horrible. They're actually, it's interesting to note that they're actually, um, the life expectancy rate in Detroit is lower than the life expectancy rate in Pyongyang, uh, which is something that a lot of people probably wouldn't like to admit. Um, so, which is, you know, it just goes, uh, it goes to show that uh, so much of the U.S. lies about, you know, how badly other countries are doing uh, are really, complete contradiction because you can look at cities like Detroit and Baltimore and and ex and see how uh, US capitalism is in decay um, so that's our secretariat and we are open to any ideas uh, in terms of uh, books ide book ideas we're also continuing our magazine red flag uh, which we're hoping to do uh, continue publishing on a quarterly basis uh, we're also FIS is participating in a delegation to Cuba uh, next month uh, with uh, Women's Federation in Cuba. Uh, so we hope that's part of our uh, our learning. You know, as, le as Lennon says, the most important thing for youth is to learn. So we're planning to go to Cuba uh, to learn from the women who have uh, led the revolution there for, for decades. Um, so we have a lot going on for those of us uh, watching this online. Uh, check us out, fightimperialism.org. Uh, we're looking for members. We need people. We have things we need to do. Um, we have so many events we want to plan. And really, it's a space for anyone to come and, and express themselves as an oppressed person. Uh, lastly, one of our last projects that we're hoping to work on uh, is a book on Black Lives Matter, uh, something along the lines of 50 Questions, 50 Answers, uh, where we collect writings from uh, black youth uh, around the country uh, responding to you know, typical questions like, oh, don't all lives matter? You know, that kind of stuff. And just kind of having responses by the people most affected on that. 
Um, that's pretty much it. Thank you for having us, and uh, you know the fight for the fight against imperialism uh, is still going on. So thank you.